Well, with the approval of brentuximab and dotin, uh, where does this fit in with other pre-transplant salvage therapy options? So that's a real evolving uh, course of data. The brentuximab and dotin is an anti-CD30 antibody that's conjugated to a poison. And in the setting of post-autologous transplant, it has a very high response rate of close to 80% uh, with some durable remissions. So there's clearly a lot of enthusiasm to potentially use it earlier. And there are a number of trials that are going on now, combining it with regimens like ICE chemotherapy, and even some people suggesting that it may ultimately replace regimens like ICE chemotherapy in the salvage setting. I think if somebody fails either ICE or the gemcitabine, vinorelbine, doxyl regimen, uh, initially, brentuximab vidotin is clearly an option at that point to try to get somebody to become PET negative prior to transplant. Uh, that is in the label of brentuximab vidotin, and that's clearly an alternative to switching the chemotherapy programs that Craig mentioned earlier. You all agree? Yeah, I agree. I think that um, uh, brentuximab vidotin, or BV, if we want to abbreviate it for the rest of the uh, talk, um, is at least in in, in my career is probably ha is the drug that has the highest single agent response rate in Hodgkin lymphoma. It is our job to figure out the best way to combine this with standard programs. What we are doing in, um, at Memorial as far as a phase two study is we actually are giving it in replace of salvage chemotherapy. We're giving six doses of it and if the patient has a complete response, we're collecting stem cells and taking the patient directly to transplant, trying to avoid the toxicity of the ICE chemotherapy. The concept is, once again, to try to cure the patient with the least amount of treatment. If the PET scan is still positive after the ICE chemotherapy, then after the brentuximab uh, treatment, uh, folks then receive ICE-based chemotherapy. But it's, once again, it's a removal of therapy from a curable patient. So you have to be very comfortable with the fact that the patient is truly in remission and we have fail safes in the program in our clinical trial to set that up. I think the one other point to make to uh, practicing clinicians before people would run and do this initially is we don't even know that the negative PET scan after brentuximab vidotin is as predictive as of outcome after autologous transplant as a negative PET scan after. Oh, that's absolutely true. Treatment. Absolutely true. So your your study will obviously teach us that among other things. So I think that the standard outside of a clinical trial for frontline salvage should still be chemotherapy, but brent, brentuximab vidotin could certainly be a second line option if that's insufficient. A caveat, just so for folks to understand, we, we have um, a small data set on patients who um, had an incomplete response to standard uh, salvage chemotherapy who then had a complete response to radiation. Now, once again, radiation is not uh, chemotherapy and it's certainly not uh, brentuximab vidotin, but those patients who had a negative PET scan prior to transplant from radiation have had the same outcome as patients who have had a negative PET scan from chemotherapy. It is certainly hoped that this will be with brentuximab and vidotin, uh, and you know, only time will tell, but once again, educationally, this is an ongoing clinical trial, and it's clearly not recommended, nor, 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 nor reimbursable, I might add, in the, and, uh, for this patient population.